This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice in it. Amen. Praise be to God. Glory to the Lamb. While we were standing in the presence of the Lord, he gave me a vision. I was going to share it then, but he wanted it recorded. And as we were standing in the presence of the Lord, I saw a stage. And all the stage hands came up and began to remove all of the structures and the, of, of the stage. And they began to move everything off the stage. Everything. All the little buildings, all of their whatever for, you know, like in a play or something. Everything was being removed off the stage because the Lord said, I'm setting a new stage. I want to share something that I heard a testimony, and maybe some of you have seen this, I don't know. But there was a woman who was in a prayer meeting. And while she was in this prayer meeting, she was taken in the spirit. And the next thing she found herself apparently alone in this room. In this, and she could hear the presence of angels. And she began to hear their wings moving back and forth. And the next thing she knew, she was taken from there into the heavenlies. And she saw thousands and thousands of angels. And, and she said they were large and they were looked like they were getting ready for war. And then she saw this one huge angel come from between all of them and come up. And she knew it was Archangel Michael. And he pulled up the golden trump and was getting ready to blow it. All of a sudden, she heard a horse galloping. And from the gallop of the horse, she heard the Lord Jesus' voice say, Stop. Stop to Michael. Stop. He was telling him, Stop. And then all of a sudden, Jesus showed up, and he said, there might be one more. Stop, because there could be one more. And as the Lord said that, the angels began to move their wings stronger and stronger. And the glory of God began to get released, and they were pushing the glory of God. And as the Lord said, one more, one more, the angels seemed to go to the edge of glory and look down to the earth. And the angels were stroking their wings harder and harder. And this blue glory cloud started moving and moving and moving. It was rolling over the edge of glory into the earth. And the Holy Spirit said to her, what if you only had six months left? And then she came to. In other words, the urgency. The urgency. What if you only had six months left? What if we only had a year left? See, you and I should be living that this is the last day. That it's like the last day. One more. One more. God is calling his children home. Back into his body. There's going to be many left. Because they refuse. And as I heard this message, I mean, it just really struck me. Because one of the things, and if anybody's ever seen Schindler's List, which is a rough flick to, file, to, to watch, because how can, it's like people doing the things of humanity, which, that's the demonic forces. But the wealthy man that was there, Schindler, he was there to begin, to make a lot of money off of the, Jews, I mean, off the German during this war to build things for them and whatever, but he was a partier. He was a fornicator, a cheat, and a liar. And began to see what the Germans were doing to the Jews and many other people, and it began to affect him. And after a period of time, he said, I've got to rescue them. I've got to do whatever I can. God began to touch his heart. 
and he began to build facilities where they were making uh, uh, bombs and stuff. And he had people working for them. And, and sometimes the German, the uh, Nazi regimes would try to come in and take these Jews from him. And he'd say, no, no, how much more does it cost? How much more? So I could keep them. And he would be paying off these German officials. They were the Nazi regime. And he was almost out of money. And finally, he ran out of money. And, and he just kept the people there. He couldn't pay them. And he brought as many people in as he could, and he, and he would feed them, and he would take care of them. And, and, and at the end, when the war was over, his cry was, I wasted so much money and so much time. I could have bought one more soul. I could have bought one more soul. And the Jews were so grateful for him that they all gathered together after they had been liberated. And the U.S. militaries and so forth, other nations came in and rescued them. And they took their gold teeth and made him a ring in remembrance and it tore him up. And that's all he kept saying is, I could have bought one more and I wasted so much time, so much money wasted, millions and millions of dollars on myself because I was so self-centered. I could have rescued one more soul. And I believe that's where God wants us to be. That's where he wants us. One more. It doesn't have to be a bunch. Just one at a time. That's all it takes. It's just one at a time. If everybody would just do one at a time. Is this the one, Lord? Is this the one? You know, God will send someone across your path. And, and you don't even have to say anything. Just be armed. Be armed with a prayer booklet. Be armed. Be ready. So many, you know, many times the Lord has said to me, this person needs to talk to you. The next thing I turn around and the person comes up to me. You just don't know. We're just to be available and ready. But we must be filled and dressed and possessed with the presence of God so that his light can shine through us so that others will want what you have. Amen? Hallelujah. In that, glory to God, one of the things that the Spirit is, I mean, you know, we've heard about some of the stuff I'm going to talk about tonight, but there's got to be a reality that comes to me and you. Go to uh, Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs 10 verse 6. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is blessed. Everyone say memory. But the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart will receive commands, commands from God, but a prating fool will what? Fall. He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. Memory of the righteous is blessed. Wise in heart receives commands from God. Why? Because they're living out of righteous memories. They're living out of what? Righteous memories. See, I, you and I live a life of memory. Without memory, you're dead. Amen. Does everybody understand it? When, uh, when, um, when a baby comes into the world, it doesn't have memory. Amen. <laughs> so our memories are assisting those whose memories have not fully developed. When a child comes in the world, it has no memory. It needs. So those who have memory must assist this child until it becomes. He has memory, memory to walk, memory to talk. Everything is based on memory. You and I, our existence is in memory. God has made it that way. Does everybody understand that? 
living out of righteous memories from God with righteous desires of the heart to do what is right in all things. You know, the word says you'll know them by their fruits, right? Well, all the fruits associated with desire of memories. You and I live, our existence is in memory. We know that we live and breathe in, in God, amen? But God has established memory to bring existence to me and you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. Life of memory. Amen. We live a life of memory. As life begins to diminish, people begin to lose their memory. Hallelujah. That means we're getting closer. <laughs> you won't need memory when you get closer to him. <laughs> Verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen or ear heard or have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them through his spirit for his, the spirit Searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of, who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now does the spirit of God have memory? Yes, he knows it all. Amen? Amen? These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolish to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind or the memory? Does everybody get it? The mind, the thoughts, the memory of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind or the memory of who? Christ. We have his memories. Does everybody get this? This is what separates us from the world. The spirit of the old man and the spirit of the new man. The mind is spiritual. The brain is carnal. It's physical. You can't do surgery on the mind. Does somebody get it? In fact, it's kind of a mystery to most people. Again, the mind is spiritual, the brain is physical. There's a law of influence that both carry memory. That's called the law of influence. Memory is stored imaginary, imagination or imagery. That's what stored memory is. It's what? Imagery. It's all stored imagery. That's what memory is. Does everybody get it? It's imagery of the past experiences, past things we've learned, to be retrieved in the present of thought or thinking. So when memory is retrieved, it's brought into the present, which we call thought, or what we call thinking. The mind is not physical it's not a physical object like the brain. Can't be seen, photographed, or repaired by surgery. <laughs> but the brain is part of the body. Our body and mind are different entities. Does everybody get it? Why? Because mind is considered memory. Memory. Our existence of life is in our memories. The word says, as a man thinks or as he remembers, so he is. Amen? Romans 12.
remember, memory is stored imagery. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. Just think if you couldn't remember nothing. You wouldn't be. Amen? You wouldn't know your name. You wouldn't know nothing. It's called spiritually dead. Verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. And do not be what? Conformed to the, this world or its memories of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your memories. Do you understand? Remember, mind is spiritual. That you may prove what is a good and an acceptable and perfect will of God. So one of the parts of the things that the enemy wants to do is he wants to alter your memories or block out the good ones and allow the corruptible ones. So there's corruptible memories and there's righteous memories. Memories that please God, memories that displease God. See, so what you and I intake is going to affect your memory. It's going to affect those images. What you're going to store. Remember, memory is nothing but stored imagery. Replace it in memories or what we call blocking or rejecting harmful memories and retrieving righteous, God-approved memories by creating new ones. You and I live a life of blocking, removing those memories. Amen? It doesn't mean that they're removed. It means that they no longer are allowing access to you. This is where people struggle because every memory <clears throat> has an emotion to it. So people make emotional decisions all the time because they're still living out of corrupt memories. When you are led by the Spirit, you are led by the mind of Christ, the memories of God. That's why the Word of God must be imparted in us all the time. His words must be there available for me. That's why they must be spoken. They must be refreshed, renewed all the time. Amen? Because we live a life of memory. 2 Corinthians 10. Second Corinthians 10. I mean, again, we go back to the area where there's things that influence us. You go into a store and you hear a, a song that brings them imagery instantly of your past or something that's what, whatever. But you have the choice to block it or accept it or start promoting it. Amen? You will promote it if you're not strong in the Spirit of God. There's that battle between memory. In verse 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Let's speak it now. I, Paul, myself, am pleading with you by the mercies of, and gentleness of Christ, or the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in present am lonely among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beg you that when I am present, I am not to be bold with that confidence by which I intend to be bold against some who think of us as if we walked according to the physical or the flesh or the old man. For th though we walk in the physical or flesh, we do not war according to the flesh or physical. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, which are what? Memory lies, amen, or harmful memories. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought. Remember, a memory is a stored image. When it comes to the present, it becomes a thought. 
bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Casting down these memories of influence that promote the flesh of the old man, the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, or bad habits. It's called self-centeredness. Leading to destruction every time. Every time. That's why the Lord gave us the formula. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Amen? In Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. You know, I really believe that the Lord is trying to bring the reality that he's trying to protect his righteous memories in us. And that we're to expose and remove or block out, bury, whatever we need to do, those corrupt and harmful memories. Not allowing them to have influence on our new man. It's our responsibility. We have the power to choose. Remember, a memory is stored imagery. When it's brought up into a present, it becomes a thought. And it carries an emotion every time. Every memory carries a thought of emotion. Every one. Everyone's burned in through emotion. In fact, how things get burned in more is through emotion. Everybody remembers a hard thing that's happened to them, a harmful thing that's happened to them, a joyful thing that's happened. Everything's got an emotional attachment to every memory. That's why people gather together. What do they do? They talk about their memories. Hey, do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> do you remember? Oh, 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 you know, it's either up or down, you know. Glory to God. Verse 1, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. In other words, memories from God. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, set your thoughts, your memories, amen, on things what? Above, not on things of the earth. In other words, we're to be creating new memories all the time. Now think about this. The word says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Let me tell you, testimonies create memory. You hang enough pe around people that are believers and have been experienced in all kinds of great, and they're talking about the Lord. Every one of them that's releasing something to create a new memory in you Amen? And a memory that's associated with God's way. That's why you got to be careful who you hang with. <laughs> Set your memory on the things of above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members or your what? Memories which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetous, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these memories of what? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Don't lie to one another since you have put off the old man of memory with his deeds and put on the new man who of memory who is renewed in the knowledge well knowledge brings what memory hallelujah and put and do, put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge of according to the image the what image does everybody see that memory is a what image of him who created, and where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, enslaved, nor free, but Christ is all in all. Memories. We're going to have memories of life or memories of death. You and I are choosing which ones we accept and reject. Remember, memories and stored image, when it comes to the present, it becomes a what? Thought with an emotion. 1 Corinthians 11.
And I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit is always there to change a memory, to replace a memory, to, to alter a memory, to turn it to, from harmful to good. Always. If we let him, this is where we got to let him. In verse, uh, chapter 11, verse 23. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. Glory. Is everybody there? For let, let's speak. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he took, he, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in what? Remembrance of me. Man, you don't think he was giving them a message? Remember, your remembrance. Then was he say the next one? Look at this. He goes, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. In other words, continue to remember what I did for you. Continue to remember. That's what communion is. It's just a bring a restored memory. You and I commune for what Jesus did. He paid the price for me and you. That brings us in an attitude of gratitude. It should always be a good memory for me and you. Thank you, Lord. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember me. That's all he asks. Remember me. Don't forget me. Keep me in your memory, will you? In Proverbs 23. That's why it says acknowledge the Lord in what? In all things. Bring him into memory. Proverbs 23. And again, we spoke this already in verse 6 and through 8. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his what? Delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. As a man thinks an individual memory, the desire, he will become them. The more a person goes back to memories that are harmful, he becomes harmful. Amen? What does the word also say? A merry heart is what? Good medicine. Why? Because that person is joyful. Why? He's rejecting harmful memories and allowing good testimony, righteous memories. They're walking in peace, joy, and righteousness. Remember, a memory is a stored image. It's brought to the present. It becomes a what? Thought with an emotion. Glory. 1 Corinthians 13. Glory. Everyone say glory. glory. We're the army of God with glory. Hallelujah. First Corinthians thirteen, verse four. Glory. Let's speak it. Love suffers long and is, is kind. Hmm. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. It's not self-seeking. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. So this is the love of God, not the lust of the world. 
But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, they will vanish away. All of this will come to an end. For we know in part and are, we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish memories. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. So there are individuals that are called Christians that refuse to renew their memories or create new ones. They're still living in the past. They haven't experienced any more new memories. Again, someone else's testimony would create a new memory. Your own testimony, your revelation is to create a new memory. Your relationship with the Lord. What does the word say? Without revelation, the restraints are taken off of the flesh. Why? That's associated with memory. Because revelation will bring, when you get a revelation from God, it empowers a memory. But if you're not getting them, then you're still, you're easily swayed, easily influenced by harmful memories. Is addiction a harmful memory? You got that right. Big time. People are looking for comfort in drugs and alcohol. I don't care what it is. Pills, pot, whatever. It's deceptive and it's nullifying righteous memories and promoting harmful ones because it's replacing them. Amen? Glory. 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy 3. The word says something to us. It says, God's not given us a spirit of fear or a memory of fear. But what? Love, power, and a sound mind, a sound, sound memories. Does everybody get that? Sound memories. Sound memories are righteous memories. And, and on, there, but there are those that are what? Harmful memories. So we know that fear is always a promoter of harmful memories. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. But know this in the last days perilous times will come for men will be lovers of what? Themselves lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its what? power and from such turn away and from such do what turn away this sort of those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women loaded down with various sins and lusts always uh led away by various lusts always what learning 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 never able to come to the knowledge of the truth that sets them free why because they're not allowing they may be learning things but they're not learning righteous memories. Does everybody understand that? They're still living on harmful memories. And, they can, and it brings limitations. So even if you've gotten beautiful, righteous, you've had wonderful experiences with the Lord, the enemy will try to nullify those memories. In fact, I have seen many people that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, walked in the gifts of the Spirit, and prophecy and everything else. Two years later, and it was just my imagination, they said. I'm like, whoa. Well, wow, they've gone back into the drug world. They've gone back into fornication, bisexual, and everything else. Ended up in mental institutions. Got on trusted in the man. Man, when you trust in man, you lose the trust of God. We don't trust in the natural. We trust in the supernatural. Amen? And, and it's blown us away. We've, we've seen people that we have taken in and helped years ago have totally walked away from the Lord. Why? 
those memories have been shut down. Those experiences, those revelations have been shut down. Now the enemy is convinced that it was just their imagination. Wow. That's incredible to us. Incredible. We've seen beautiful lives been destroyed by allowing the enemy to infiltrate the memories. And the enemy begins to create new memories of the flesh and self-centeredness and nullifying the memories of God. Some people got into a point where they don't even believe that there's a God anymore. Very bad. But this is where we are right now in the world. You know, the enemy is using technology to mess with people's memories. Everything that they're using right now. All technology. No matter what it is. Medias, phones. I mean, you can... You, you, anything can come up there. Romans 8. We, you and I must be aware of these things. We must be sensitive to these things. And we must keep creating new memories. And I don't mean harmful memories. I mean righteous memories. Amen. Joyful memories. Romans 8, verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds or memories on the things of the flesh. The old ways. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded or fleshly mind or fleshy memories is what? Death. Those are harmful memories. <laughs> but to be spiritually minded or spiritual memories from God is life and what? Peace. Because the carnal memory is hatred towards God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Flesh is corrupt memories that are taken from the past into the present thought with emotion, imagination, to fulfill the desire of a corrupt heart. A corrupt heart. Remember, these memories are the corrupt heart. Why? Because it changes desire. Amen? Think about that. You know, everyone in this room knows somebody whose desires have shifted. Somewhere. Their now desires are to either get high or be uh, money chasing or opposite sex chasing, sometimes same sex chasing, whatever it may be. But they're chasing the world. Their desires are towards the world, no longer towards God. But they may speak of God, but you can truly tell them by their desire, by their choices. Amen? 1 Corinthians 3. You know, uh, even when people have sorrowful memories, an area, let's say you lose a loved one or something like that. You know, so many people are in sorrow. They're, 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 they're overtaken with oppression and so forth. But man, God can, God can come and give you a vision of where they are. You know what? I mean, I have seen some of my family loved ones in heaven. Even my dog. You know, I was sorrowful over my dog. My first my demon fighter. When I lost my demon fighter, I, 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 I couldn't go in there. My wife went in there and put her down because she was so ill. I mean, she'd been raised from the dead twice. She died on me twice, laid hands on her, and God brought her back alive. I kept saying, Lord, one more time. One more time. He get, let it happen two more times. Third time, he said, no more. And I was sorrowful. And one day in service, I had a vision, and there was a dog standing next to the Lord. I'm like, oh, cool, thank you. I was set free, though. You know, do you know what I'm saying? God will give you something. He'll give you a memory. So that memory comes to me. And other memories of family members or whatever that I know are with the Lord. 
Why? So I don't have sorrows. It becomes, doesn't become a harmful memory. It becomes a joyful memory. Woohoo! Glory! Where were we? 1 Corinthians 3? Yeah. Is that where we are? Is that where you are? Okay. Verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you're still not able, for you're still what? Living off of your carnal memories. For where there are envy and strife and division among you, are you not carnal, fleshly, and behaving like an idiot or mere men? Amen? Mere men. Mere men. What's he talking about? Human state. The carnal state. You and I should be, we're not mere men anymore. We carry a human body, but we're not human no more. We're eternal. Humanity comes to an end. Eternally is forever. But as you see yourself, so shall you be also. Glory. Let's grow a little further. For when I say, for one says I am of Paul and another I am of Apollos, and you are not, are you not counted? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed, as the Lord gave to each one. I planted Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. So that neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. And he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, <clears throat> you are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on these founda on a foundation with gold, silver, stone, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? And if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Memories are used to build future. Amen? They're, they're, they're used to build a future and maintain a position in the present time. Your call, purpose, and destiny is associated with your memory and allowing God to influence and create new memories. Think about this for a second. When, when you and I have dreams and visions, and we know that in, in, the, in the book of Joel it talks about, and God pours out a spirit on all flesh, and they were having dreams and visions and so forth, right? Well, dreams and visions are um, sometimes taken it with individuals it takes an individual out of time. Dreams and visions will take an individual out of time, amen, to adjust the memory for the future. Does everybody grab hold of that? Why? Because sometimes there's so much influence that a person can't receive what God's trying to reveal to them. So he'll do it while you sleep. In fact, most of us are being imparted while we sleep, but we don't know it. I mean, every, nobody remembers all their dreams, do they? Some people say, I never dreamt in my life. Well, they do every night. They just don't know it. But they, they will either respond to it or react to it. Uh, but, you know, the enemy likes to place harmful memories while we sleep too. So that's where it's important. Well, when that memory is there, when the Holy Spirit brings that to remembrance of that harmful memory, you're to get rid of it. You're not to accept it or water it. Or allow it to make root. You're to get rid of it. That's our responsibility, isn't it? So many times God will give you dreams and visions to adjust a memory for a future. And Malachi 3.
Aleluia. Malachi 3, verse 16. Let's speak it together. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. Well, what were they doing? Giving testimony. And the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him. So God was doing what? He was bringing it. Why? So when they brought, come before him, he, remembrance. Heck, if God is writing a book of remembrance, man, that ought to tell us something. Remember, he said, whatever you do, remember me. Set me before you. The psalmist said, I always put the Lord before me. Why? So a memory is constant with the Lord. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. And so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who what? Meditate on his name. He said, they shall be mine, says the Lord, on the day that I make them my what? jewels. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Book of Remembrance for the Just. In John chapter 14. And verse 25. Ooh, let's start at verse 23. And Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my what? Word. He will keep my what? Word. Will his words create new memory for you? Yes. Good memories, right? Healthy memories. Healing memories. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words or memories. And the word which you hear is not, of, not mine, but the father who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit... Whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and he will bring to what? Your remembrance of all things that I what? Said to you. So he will bring the word to your remembrance. That's why it's important to be filled with the Spirit of God, isn't it? That's why it's important to assemble. Be refreshed all the time. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? The word of the new created memories is from God. That's why it's important that we take his word in. Amen? And testimonies are great. I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 2. And the Holy Spirit will always bring to remembrance. You know, one of the things he brings up a lot is your experiences with him. To remind you, he brings those testimonies up all the time, man. To keep you refreshed. To keep you renewed. To keep you connected. So you can go, Glory. First John chapter two twenty six. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you or manipulate your memory. Amen. Verse twenty seven. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. 
But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him that when he appears, we may have the confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he's righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Why are they practicing righteousness? Because they're allowing the righteous memories to come into the present. What a battle we're in. Again, it's a life of memory. The battle is always over memory. That attack is always trying to impart memory, memory. And then let me tell you, what comes out of your mouth will also become a memory. Hello. Amen. That's why we have to break those, our own labels off. Sometimes we're our worst enemy of bringing bad memories. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And Lord, we just ask that you'll continue to bring experiences and revelations with testimonies and your word and allowing the Holy Spirit to bring to remembrance everything that you've done and that we would remember you in everything and constantly acknowledge you in whatever we do so that we may maintain memories from the throne and not from the world in Jesus name and everybody said amen hallelujah be blessed and stay dressed with the glory